In this video, I'm going to be talking about my V-mount battery solution for the Sony FX6. Here's the story. I've been a big fan of the Core SWX batteries ever since I started using them on my Panasonic EVA 1. They're a great solution if you want to simply plug a battery into your camera and not worry about any extra adapters. The main selling feature for me was the P-tap or D-tap out and USB out to power other devices. That and its large capacity of 98 watt hours. However, now I'm using the Sony FX6 and I'm also using the Shogun 7 video recorder and monitor. And that device uses a lot of battery power and the 98 watt hour battery, although that is quite large and gives me a long run time with my Sony FX6 by itself, but when I pair the Sony FX6 and the Shogun 7, the battery life isn't as long as I would like it to be. When using the Shogun 7, I don't really want to have to worry about an extra pair of batteries to constantly checking to see if they're charged. I really just want to simplify my rig and have one battery source power everything at the same time. And that's why I've invested in the V-mount system. I'm using the Tilter battery plate, which has two P-tap or D-tap ports, one two-pin port, and one USB-A port. On top of that, I'm using the Core SWX Neo 150S V-mount battery, which has one P-tap port and one USB-A port on the top of the battery as well. It also has an estimated runtime battery indicator, which I find really helpful, and also has a four bar battery indicator on the side. Typically, I'll get about two hours and 50 minutes or around about three hours of runtime using this setup of the Sony FX6 and the Shogun 7. And during that time, I would be continuously recording, shooting 4K 25p or 50p footage. As mentioned before, there is a runtime indicator on the back of the battery, which I do find really helpful. Don't expect it to be 100% accurate, but it does help you get a bit of an indication of how much runtime you can expect on the battery. I do find this to be a bit more helpful than the standard four bar indicator that a lot of V-mount batteries have. And right now I only have one of these V-mount batteries, but for peace of mind, I'm going to invest into another one just so I've got two to get me through a full day of shooting for my client work. Going over to the V-mount system is a significant investment. You do have to pay for obviously the battery and then also the battery plate to then go onto the Sony FX6 and then also the charger to charge the battery. So it is a significant investment, but I do see the value in it because it is simplifying my rig and allowing me to power everything with one battery. And obviously, unfortunately, with that said, if that battery dies, then everything dies. So that is something to be aware of. One thing I didn't really like about the Core SWX 98 watt hour battery was that the P-tap was on the end of the battery and not the top or side. This meant that when I was doing handheld shots, the end of the cable would be jamming into my chest when I was trying to have three points of contact, meaning holding the camera with both hands and then pressing it against my chest. With the V-mount battery, it's a flat surface and the P-tap cable plugs in on the side of my battery plate or on the top of the battery. That's a really small detail, but I thought it was worth mentioning. I do like that the camera plate does have the option to have P-tap or D-tap out. This means that when I'm changing over batteries, I don't have to worry about unplugging cables and then plugging them back in because the cables can just remain in the camera plate and the battery simply comes out and then goes back on when needed. Also at the end of every shoot, I do take my V-mount battery off the camera and then store it separately because it is advised not to have the V-mount batteries connected to your camera when you're transporting it. One thing that I wish that the camera plate or the battery had was USB-C out. And that's mainly because I have a Sound Devices Mix Pre 3 and that does accept USB-C as a power option. And if the camera plate or the battery did have the USB-C option out, then that would be a really good solution for me to be able to power that device while running the FX6 and the Shogun 7 at the same time. I can use the USB-A port to power the device. However, it runs at a lower power mode. So not all the features are enabled. And one of the features that isn't enabled is HDMI trigger. So every time I hit record on the FX6, I then have to hit record on the Mix Pre 3 as well. And that might sound like a small thing, but it is really easy to forget to hit record on the Mix Pre 3 and then not get that audio that you really do need. I do have this smaller V-mount battery, which is the FX Lion Nano 1, and this does have USB-C out. So I do know that there are some V-mount batteries that do have it. However, this is a 50 watt hour battery 
And that's not enough to run my FX6, Shogun 7, and Mix Pre 3 all at the same time. It won't give me a very long runtime. They do make bigger versions of this. However, they only have the four bar indicator and not the time remaining indicator like the core SWX Neo does. And finally, I thought that I'd mention that when you have extra camera accessories, things can sometimes go wrong. The person that I sold my previous batteries to told me that they were investing into those batteries because they needed a backup solution when something goes wrong on set. They told me that when they were on set, the cable that was connecting the battery plate to the FX6 simply stopped working and they were left with a camera that wouldn't work. I'm not too concerned about this happening to me because if that did happen to me, I do still have the stock battery that I got with the FX6. Plus I also always carry the FX6's power charger as well. So if there is mains power, I can power the camera that way as well. But more importantly, I always take two cameras to set and my backup camera is the Sony a7S III. This camera lives in the backpack that has all my lens and some of my camera accessories as well. So in the unlikely event that my A camera, the Sony FX6, isn't able to work, I always have a backup. And that's the video. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this channel for more videos on video creation in the future.